Hi friends, it's Lola. This month I'm issuing a challenge for myself and it is to read all of the books that are finalists in a certain category on the Goodreads Best Books of the Year 2018 awards thing. So if you don't know, Goodreads is like my favorite bookish site to keep track of what I'm reading and to find out information about books. And like a lot of other bookish websites, there's an end of the year vote where Goodreads announces like the best books of the year. So it's actually the beginning of November right now. The dates for the Goodreads awards are October 30th, the first round begins and you can nominate books and there's already a list to vote from. November 6th, the semi-finalists are announced. November 13th is the final round of voting and that ends on the 26th. So hopefully this video will come up right after the 26th when voting has closed and then the winners will be announced December 4th. There are all these different categories and my favorite genre is mystery thriller. So I thought it would be cool to read like all 20 finalists and actually for the first time have a non-bias vote. I haven't voted in the awards in the last couple years because, oh, before you think this, uh, video sponsored by Goodreads. I hate the Goodreads Awards. I really don't like these like public votes because it means nothing. Open public voting like this is, I mean, voting in general for any awards from anybody is completely subjective, like what makes a good book or the best book. But the thing about these public votes is popularity contests is unless you have read all 20 books, in the category, your vote is bias. And 90% of the time, you can predict the book that's gonna win in every single category because it's just the most read book. If you haven't read all 20 books, like maybe you've read five, you're still gonna go vote. You're not even voting for the book that was the best. You're voting for the book that you were most interested in reading. I went back in the last couple of Goodreads awards and in every like mystery thriller category, which is my favorite like genre of book, there were a couple of times where I had only read like three books in that whole list and I still voted for my favorite. So this year I'm gonna read all of the books in the mystery thriller category, all of the finalists, even if I'm not interested in the book, and I'm going to vote. So from today, the beginning of November, until the 26th, I have 26 days to read all of the finalists. The problem is, I don't know all of the finalists yet because we're only in the first round. So I'm gonna cut to a clip of last night when they were announced at like 10 p.m. and I couldn't have the patience to wait until it was like good lighting to film. So I just filmed me finding out the first round. So my goal is to read all of the thrillers that are in the finalists. So I don't know how many nominees there are or exactly my game plans. So we're just gonna click it and see what happens. Choice is yours. Vote for the best books of the year in the 10th annual Goodreads Choice Awards. Categories, we're gonna do mystery thriller. So there seem to be 15 is what I'm counting. So we've got the Chalk Man, which isn't on my TBR, but I do recognize it. Something in the Water, which is on my TBR. Lethal White, Cormoran Strike number four. I had a bad feeling there would be a bunch of sequels on this list, and I don't know how I'm gonna go with that. The Witch Elm by Tana French, which I didn't have plans on reading because I thought it was part of the Dublin Murder Squad, but it's apparently not. It's its own thing, and it is on my TBR. IQ number three by Joe Ide, never heard of it. Force of Nature, Aaron Falk number two by Jean Harper. That does sound familiar. The Outsider by Stephen King, which is somewhere up there. The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Massey. Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. I've been seeing this everywhere, so I thought it might be on here. The President is Missing, which I also assumed would be on here by James Patterson and Bill Clinton. Wasn't really interested in it, but I'm down to try. We've got Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell, which I was hoping was on here because I have two copies of it and I do want to read it. Bring Me Back by B.A. Paris. That's the first one on this entire list that I've already read. 
The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks, which isn't a surprise. I've seen that talked about a lot. Not on my TBR. I think it might have been on my TBR at one point, but I just wasn't that excited about it. The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn I knew would be on here, and it is on my TBR shelf. The Death of Mrs. Westaway, the second book on this list I have read, and that's all of them. But you can also write in a vote. Of the 15 books I've read two, I have three on my physical TBR. There are seven that I've like heard of or have been interested in at some point and two that I have no interest in. I have read the first book in the Cormoran Strike series. I'm not gonna read book two and three so either I'm not reading book four at all or I'm reading it having not read any others. And then the IQ one seems kind of familiar but I don't even know really what it is. So based on what I told you about how the highest red book wins like every single time because math. This year I can pretty much already predict, see I'm gonna put my foot in my mouth if this year I happen to be wrong, but I looked and listed all of the books and all of their ratings and red amounts and their are like four books that are rated above a four out of five but just watch and see like those ones aren't even going to be the one that wins the one that wins is going to be the most read not the highest rated the highest read because if you go to a list of books and one of them has had a hundred thousand ratings on goodreads the chances of you having read that one are higher than the rest. So the book with the highest amount of ratings, which means the most people have read it on Goodreads and marked it as read on Goodreads and therefore are interacting with Goodreads, that one is going to get the most votes. And that one is The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. All right, I'm interjecting from like a week later when we're getting close to finding out the top 10. When I first started and I came up with this video idea, I didn't exactly realize how the rounds worked, so I thought I would explain it. So the first round, we get 15 books, and that is chosen by just the Goodreads gods. They apparently do it based on reviews and ratings and shelves and the number of times the books have been read. I don't know how they come up with their 15, but they come up with their 15 on their own. The first voting round essentially does not matter who gets votes. All that matters is who gets written in. So there's 15 books and you can click vote next to any one that you want, or you can write in a ballot for someone you don't see on that 15. And what happens is those 15 automatically go to the next round, which makes no sense to me. And I think a lot of people don't know that because I see a lot of authors on Twitter this week saying, oh my gosh, I made it to the second round, I'm so excited. Totally valid to be excited, but if you are already in the first round, you are automatically guaranteed to the second round which is weird. And then what happens is the five books that get written in the most get added to that 15 to make a top 20. In my opinion, if any books get written in more than the top 15 already established, they should be able to bump any of the 15 because clearly Goodreads miss chose their top 15. Regardless, the next round, whichever of that top 20, the 10 that get the most votes go into the final round. So my goal with this video and with the last two weeks of the month essentially are to read those top 10. I just want my vote on the 27th to be accurate and to do that I have to read the top 10 and also I cannot vote in any of the other rounds which is hurting me okay back to what I was talking about before so to recap the books on the list are The Outsider, Bring Me Back, Mrs. The Death of Mrs. Westaway, The Chalk Man, The Wife Between, Force of Nature, Wrecked, whatever the cuckoo's calling Robert Gabriel one is, Then She Was Gone, The Woman in the Window, There's Something in the Water, The Witch Elm, The President is Missing, Sometimes I Lie, and The Widows of Malabar. Update! It is the 6th and I can check in to see what the next round has 
revealed. So, Goodreads Awards, mystery thrillers, there are 20. So the new ones are Jane Doe by Victoria Helen Stone, which I've never heard of. The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sagar. At least I predicted one right. Leverage in Death. I actually, J.D. Robb, I've never read their books. I have no interest in it. I was hoping this wouldn't show up on the list, but this is one of the ones that um, I had like predicted would be on here because I feel like this person is on this list like every year. This is the 47th in a series and I don't know if you have to read the rest, so we'll see how that goes. And oh, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I didn't actually know that was a thriller. The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. Didn't know that was a thriller either, but I have seen that cover quite a few times. And that's it. I just looked at the books really quickly and actually all five of them have a higher average rating than like almost the entire original list. So that's the update on November 6th. So we're now a couple days out from finding out top 10. I am actually in the middle. I haven't completed any of the books but i am halfway through quite a few of them so i don't have any updates on like which one i'm liking the best or whatever but i do have a pretty good stack going of ones i've actually gotten my hands on so at this point here's what i've collected from the top 20 but actually this one isn't in the top 20 but i thought i would try to read this before reading this since i have a feeling this might end up in the top 10. So of course I have the death of Mrs. Westway. I was sent this by the publisher, then she was gone. This one I found at a thrift store. This one I also found at the thrift store. Force of Nature, also at the thrift store. So I only spent a combined total of less than $10 on all of these three. Same with this one, it doesn't count towards the 20 but whatever. And then The Woman in the Window I've had for a while. So the only ones that I have like bought myself and paid full price for are these two. And then what's happening with the rest is Sometimes I Lie, I found on Book Outlet. So that's on its way to me. And then Jane Doe and The Broken Girls were available at the library. So those are on their way. And the rest of them I just downloaded on Scribd. So I have audiobooks of the other eight. All right, it's the evening of November 12th and the final results have been posted. So this list is going to be the top 10 most voted books. And now we can officially get the reading started to read. 10 books in like 14 days until this round, the final round is closed. I definitely have my preferences for what I hope shows up on this list, but I'm gonna be open for whatever. So, here we go. The Woman in the Window is number one. The Outsider is the next one. Then She Was Gone. Those are all three exciting things because I've already started reading all three of those. And now The President is Missing, okay? The Wife Between Us, which I have, so that's good. Lethal White. Uh, it's fine. The Witch Elm, and I'm looking forward to reading that, so that's exciting. The Death of Mrs. Westaway, so there's one book on here that I've already read. That's good. Force of Nature, which is okay, because I bought it, but that means I have to read The Dry as well, I think. Or at least I might as well, because I have it. Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney, and that's it. That's 10. Oh. The okay. But, okay, so I bought the Chalk Man and now I don't need it. Like, I'll still try to read it, of course. And all of the books I requested from the library that were write-ins, I don't need those. Something in the Water, the one I was really looking forward to, not on the list. The Widows of Malabar Hill, which I don't even know how it made the list, isn't there. And now we can really get the reading started. So I will go ahead and update you every time I complete one of the books on the list. And I'll tell you what I think. Okay, let's begin the reviews, shall we? I guess we'll begin with the only book that I've already read from the top 10, and that's The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I read this a couple months ago. I was almost ready to write off Ruth Ware completely because I've read all of her previous three books, I believe, and I gave them all three stars. I just thought Ruth Ware was not for me. And then The Death of Mrs. Westaway ended up being four 
and a half stars. This follows a woman who gets a letter in the mail bequeathing her to a substantial amount of money, a fortune left to her by a dead family member. However, she is not actually the intended recipient, but she decides to impersonate this person because she has the same name and go and get the money anyway. She's in a very bad financial situation and she needs the money and she's a tarot card reader and she thinks that she could easily manipulate these people and find a way to get the money. I thought the pacing was amazing and overall the atmosphere was great because it's set in this like creepy old kind of house, this mansion that all the family members are staying at and it felt like a haunted house there was nothing haunted there's nothing supernatural paranormal or anything in this book but it had that like spooky vibe to it just based on where they were staying and i loved it a lot that being said like i stated it was four and a half stars not five stars but technically if we are ranking right now this is in my number one spot and the hope is that with every subsequent book i enjoy it more and the number one spot will continue to be bumped. These are supposedly the 10 best thrillers of the year, so I'm assuming I'm gonna love them all, right? The next book I chose to read because it's a favorite author. It's the one I've had on my TBR shelf the longest, and it's just the one that I was most interested in reading. I'm pretty proud of myself for this one, actually, because I completed an almost 600-page book in two days. This is The Outsider by Stephen King. Honestly, the first half of this book, I thought it was going to be not only a new favorite book, but like a new favorite Stephen King. It started out so strong. It was super mysterious. I had no idea what was going to happen. Basically, the story revolves around this child who has been murdered and raped and had horrific things happen to him and it's very clear who did it and it was his baseball coach. There is DNA evidence, there are eyewitness accounts of it happening and throughout the story we're listening to interviews and people are talking about what they saw and we're also from like detective positions accusing this person and taking them to jail. However, there is also DNA evidence and eyewitness proof of him being somewhere else at the exact same time as the murder. It was incredibly engaging and I was loving every second of it. And then about halfway through a lot of stuff changes and we're kind of following like three different stories and three different characters and three different situations all revolving around this event but I just found it really hard to care about all of the people being introduced later and all of the storylines being introduced later and I just wanted more of what I was reading in the first half. So the first half of this was five stars, the second half was even under a three star for me. I really wasn't enjoying it at all and I guess I'm rating it a three which sucks. I was hoping I could I could bump I was hoping I could find a new five star but uh, this is now in the second position on my chart I would recommend completing the Bill Hodges trilogy before going into this however if you haven't and you just like lost interest throughout the series like it does kind of recap that situation for you it's the next day I thought I would try to vlog a little bit rather than just these dull review clips. So the book I'm going to read next is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. I've heard great things about Lisa Jewell but have never read one of her books. The publisher sent me an ARC earlier this year. I rarely don't get around to the ARCs I receive so I felt really guilty about not getting to that one by the time it came out. And then I received another copy from Indigo when they sent out a package of like their top 10 books of the year. And I still didn't read it. So I finished my next book, Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Uh, it took me three days to read this one, so I'm a little bit behind schedule for the 10 books. I almost finished this and then my friends went out to the bar 
invited me up to the bar. So then I drank a bunch of old fashions and then I finished it. I don't think I've ever read a book like after drinking. It was weird. Sorry, I know I look so tired. Um, so two stars. I really did not enjoy this and I was pushing myself through since like the first third. This book did two things that I hate. One of them is just when the reader knows the entire plot the entire time and the entire reading experience is just reading about the characters finding out all the things you already know. I'm assuming this isn't just a me thing but like just from the synopsis you know literally everything. I was not surprised by a single plot point. This follows a woman whose daughter went missing 10 years ago. She was like a teenager and since that happens like her life hasn't been perfect. She hasn't been the best mother to her other children. She's obviously been grieving. Her marriage fell apart and now she's just starting to get like a new lease on life and she meets a man at a bar and he has a daughter that looks just like her daughter. Oh, and the other thing I don't like, I said there's two things I especially don't like in thrillers. One of them is when we know everything before the characters. The other thing is long villainous monologues where like at the end of a movie or book, the villain explains why he's a villain and why all these bad things happened and why he did what he did or why she did what she did. And this had that to a whole nother level. And yeah, I guess this is in my third spot on the list. I, I hope it's gonna be at the bottom of the list by the end of this and everything else I read is going to be incredible. It just occurred to me that I took five days to read two books and I needed to read every book in like one and a half days. I now have 10 days to read seven books. So it is the weekend now. Let's try to read an entire book today and an entire book tomorrow. I might just go ahead and try to read these and I realized I know nothing about these. So let's find out what this is together. I just remember that part of this video concept was going to be getting, collecting all of the books and then reading the synopsis because I actually didn't know what a lot of them were about. So I have the dry and then the one that's up for the award is Force of Nature. This is by Jane Harper. I have vaguely heard of this and I think I probably didn't dig any deeper, find anything more about it because it says federal agent Aaron Falk and generally like books from a police officer or detective's point of view are not my favorites. Police procedural books are not my favorite. But everyone loves this series, so I'm definitely willing to give it a go. Maybe it's something I would love. Federal agent Aaron Falk hasn't been back to the place where he grew up in 20 years. Not since he and his father were run out of town. Even when Falk gets word that his childhood best friend Luke is dead and his entire family murdered, Falk still isn't planning on going back, but then he gets a note. Luke lied, you lied be at the funeral. And just like that, Falk is swept back into the secrets of the place and the people he left so long ago. I don't know if I should read. It seems to be a totally unrelated story, but it still stars Aaron Falk. And I know people say that sometimes with these detective mysteries, kind of like with CSI or a show like that, you don't have to watch every episode to get the gist. But I'm just gonna go ahead and try to read this. 350 pages. I've got a couple hours till bed. Let's see what we can do. Update, I finished the dry. It was just okay, but the ending was actually really good. Probably like a 3.75 out of five. I am a little bummed that I just read an entire book in, in a day that isn't on the list of 10, but I'm going to attempt to also read Force of Nature in one day. And now I know like the main character well and I think it'll go by quickly. This story actually sounds more interesting than the other one anyway. I guess he's investigating something about five women who have a corporate retreat in the wilderness. Something happens and when they all come out of the woods, they are each telling a different story of what happened. I'm about halfway through Force of Nature. I'm liking it more than the dry, but it's getting very late. 
and I have a bad feeling that I'm gonna get no sleep this week. So I finished Force of Nature and I really liked it. It hasn't taken the top spot or anything. I guess it's in the second spot. I give it a four out of five. He's not a traditional like police officer. Like he deals with like money, like laundering, like tracks, like banks and people stealing money. But he, he's getting involved in these other situations. And this one involves a bunch of women who are like in the wilderness. I think I might actually continue in this series if and when Jane Harper writes another book. Really liked this, uh, I think, because I like survival type stories and this, the timeline was split and so we were like back in the day from a bunch of the women's perspectives of the night that everything happened and then we were current day finding out things. So I liked the time hops and I liked the survival aspect of it. So here we are on day six of this challenge. I have now read four of the ten finalists. I started to think like, you know what? I got this. Like, I can do it. And then I bought these. These are the last three books that I didn't have. Well, I still have one that's on its way in the mail, but Canada Post is on strike, so who knows when that's coming. But, oh uh, yeah, these are huge. I know it's a paperback and we can't really compare, but like, this is the book I read last night. And that's the next book I need to read. <laughs> ah, help. So the president is missing. It's 500 pages. It's not terrible. But Lethal White, 650. The book that I want to read least is the biggest one. Great. What I'm thinking is I'm just going to ignore these ones. So I'm going to get some other books out of the way first. And for those, I can choose The Wife Between next or The Woman in the Window which actually is pretty long too, I think. 427 pages. Okay, I've decided I'm going to read The Woman in the Window. I'm assuming this is going to win. Just based on the math that we discussed, this is the most read, so it should get the most votes. The only time that a book has won in the mystery category in the last however many years without having the most ratings is if it's a Stephen King. Every single year, either Stephen King wins or a super hyped thriller that I hated wins. That's pretty much been the consistent thing that's happened for the last I don't know how many years. And this has been that this year for me. I've seen this everywhere. I even tweeted probably at the beginning of the year and I was like, is the woman in the window actually good or is this just that book? that everybody's obsessed with for no real reason. But I'm gonna read it, see what the hype's about. Maybe I'll love it, I don't know. Update, I am 100 pages in and I love it a lot so far. So in a turn of events, I really, really liked The Woman in the Window. The first half was five stars. It was super engaging, but then things started to like get revealed and there were things that I thought were way too obvious and I wish they were done a little differently. But then the biggest reveal did surprise me so I have to respect it for that. This follows a woman with agoraphobia and she stays in her house all day and she's been through a trauma and she just watches her entire neighborhood and she just stays inside and like obsessively watches her neighbors and she sees something bad happen and she connects with all these different people and it was twisty and good and really fast paced for being over 400 pages really just couldn't put it down but overall four stars i respect if this does win the goodreads awards still haven't found a new favorite thriller though and i'm gonna be kind of bummed if the one book on the list of 10 that i had already read still ends up being my favorite at the end of this it's time for another late night ugly bun reading update i am 150 pages into the witch elm which if you remember is the one of the three books that I just bought that I actually am interested in reading. The other two I'm just gonna keep putting off forever. So that's a third of the way through 
and wow i'm bored is this a thriller is this is even a mystery there's nothing mysterious it follows this guy i had no idea what this is about actually i still haven't read this so this might spoil things that happen later which is why i often don't read the blurb or the synopsis for thriller mysteries so it starts out with this guy who has like a seemingly perfect life and he does something a little shady at the beginning of the book and then these two guys come and just beat the stuffing out of him and steal everything from his apartment. And now he um, is still really injured. He's had like a head injury. He doesn't speak properly. He can't walk properly. And I guess we're led to believe that the thing that he did has something to do with these guys. But I'm guessing like it doesn't have to do with that thing that he did. And that's the mysterious part of this. I guess I'm supposed to wonder who beat him up and why. But other than like a general wondering that I don't even really care that much about, I'm horrifically bored. And I feel like nothing's happening. Like I just read the word witch elm for the first time, a third of the way into the book. And I still don't understand what it has to do with anything. He's going to stay with um, a dying family member at this house. There's other family members he's like connecting with for the first time in a long time. It's really boring. I'm now 300 pages in. I now know more of what the story's about. I now understand the mystery. I now understand what the witch elm is in reference to, I still think it's dull. I finished The Witch Elm. I didn't like it. If I wasn't doing this challenge, I would have DNF'd it. I considered DNF'ing it like five different times. But the actual mystery, and as I have found is in the synopsis, is about a witch elm. And like buried kind of in it, hidden in it is like a dead body and that's what the mystery revolves around oh my god i don't know what i don't like about tana french's writing like i really can't pinpoint it does this book have some type of literary merit that i just can't recognize probably do i just need plot twists and cheap thrills probably maybe that's what i'm looking for in a book i don't know where it ranks in this thing pretty far at the bottom <laughs> so time to read another book i'll let you know what i pick actually i got a package from book outlet so that means the final book finally arrived and i think it's pretty short so that would be a good read next here is sometimes i lie by alice feeney it's quite short which is good because this will be sandwiched between like two 600 page books 258 pages I don't know what this is about. Let's find out together. My name is Amber Reynolds. There are three things you should know about me. One, I'm in a coma. Oh shit, girl. Two, my husband doesn't love me anymore. Oh shit, girl. Three, sometimes I lie. Okay. Amber Reynolds wakes up in a hospital. She can't move, she can't speak, she can't open her eyes. She can hear everyone around her, but they have no idea. Amber doesn't remember what happened to her, but she has a sneaking suspicion her husband had something to do with it, or her sister. Or maybe both. Is she in a coma due to an accident? Is her sister having an affair with her husband? What happened at work with her horrible boss? And who is the person who is silently visiting her bedside each night? This brilliant psychological thriller asks, is something really a lie if you believe it's the truth? Jesus. So I finished Sometimes I Lie and it's a really difficult book for me to rate, mainly because it had a really really good plot twist um one of my favorite plot twists i've read this twist once before and it turned out to be one of my favorite books and i haven't read it since and it still totally caught me off guard and surprised me and i think it's just great but the book itself i i didn't love for how short this book is oh it really it really dragged so yeah this woman's in a coma and she's just there's a lot of different timelines and she's reliving what happened in her childhood and what happened uh before the coma and then we're reading what's currently happening during the coma certain 
scenarios were kind of repetitive and dragging and the writing was just really dramatic at least the first half just read more like really overly dramatic chiclet and then it got mysterious and then the plot twist which was great so um average book but great twist and like the last third was awesome so what is my rating but like it was really engaging and i couldn't put it down so i don't know regardless did not bump anything pretty near the top compared to what i've read and i now have three books remaining i'm gonna go over to the wife between us next which is by two authors greer hendrix and sarah pekinen so this i think is about a woman who's married to a man and his ex-wife is like stalking her that's what i think it's about having not read the synopsis when you read this book you will make many assumptions oh what a weird synopsis you will assume you're reading about a jealous ex-wife you will assume she's obsessed with her replacement a beautiful younger woman who's about to marry the man they both love you will assume you know the anatomy of this tangled love triangle assume nothing twisted and deliciously chilling the wife between us deftly explores the hidden complexities of marriage and the dangerous truths we ignore in the name of love read between the lines okay i really hate that synopsis <laughs> but okay grabbed a lot of people's attention i guess because it's a really well read and loved thriller this year i believe it's becoming a movie okay i'm halfway through the wife between us and i'm pretty shook because if you remember the plot twist i was just talking about that happened in sometimes i lie the same plot twist just happened in here which i've only read once ever in like one of my favorite thrillers which i told you so that's super weird i actually liked it even better in this context it's obviously not like the identical plot twist because the stories are different but the premise was the same so i mean i get why both of these are in the top 10 because it's a really good plot twist and if it's the first time you read it especially it's it's just kind of epic depending i don't want to say anything i don't know depending on like the second half obviously this could end up being a five star oh my god the wife between us it did it it bumped it i don't know if this is a full five star thriller it's a 4.5 4.75 and it's it's bumping the death of mrs west away this unexpected one has become the number one the plot twists were just too good and the pacing was perfection it's not a perfect five because like there i wish i wish it was a little darker there are some elements to it that i think could have gone even further but yeah 4.75 it's taken the number one spot totally did not expect this i'm on to my second last book so i picked up the president is missing by james patterson and bill clinton i've never read a james patterson as you can see i'm more than halfway through and i actually kind of like it i'm 300 pages in and there are 500 pages in here so i'm gonna try to finish it all today but i might have a little leftover to read tomorrow and the president is missing i actually just got to the part in the book where the president is missing but essentially it follows a president i've actually i tried out the audiobook and i'm reading like i'm going back and forth whenever i have time because it feels like a long book if i can't physically read it if i'm like cleaning or cooking i'll listen to the audiobook and dennis quaid is narrating um the president's part it's like a whole cast which is cool and i really can't stand him in his voice so i think i'm gonna finish the rest just reading it but it's about a president who i see now as dennis quaid if this ever turns into a movie i assume the president has to be dennis quaid now and it's just like a spy in war kind of thing like they're terrorists and there's a lot of just like white house jargon where they're talking to their whole team of people and they're making decisions and the president's kind of going off on his own and working with somebody who he's not supposed to to like try to 
do good things for the country but like people think that he's doing bad things this really isn't what i associate as a thriller like this is not a mystery thriller to me and i think i just need to i don't know open up my mind more so far it's just it's good i would give it like a three and a half if i had to rate it right now i like it more than i thought i would but political type stuff isn't what i really enjoy though i do appreciate that he worked with bill clinton or that bill clinton wrote some of this or however that works because clearly there's a lot of um stuff that like only the president or people working closely with the president would know and it's really cool like i know it's not true but it's like behind the scenes kind of like stuff happening i don't live in america so i care very little about a lot of things in here maybe that's my problem all right it's time for the final update and i did it but like i didn't really do it so first last time i updated you i was two-thirds of the way through the president is missing i finished this and it didn't get any better for me like i get it i understand why people like James Patterson, I don't think I'll ever read another James Patterson, at least like I don't foresee that in my future. And I realized how stupid I sounded when I called this not a thriller. It's just like a political thriller. And in my mind, I was separating those two. I get it for me, just not very exciting or interesting or surprising. I wasn't invested in anything. This just really isn't my type of book. Overall, like it was just fine. And I think I give it a three. And then, I did try like I actually I got the audiobook I listened to I think I got to page like 120 so that's this far into the book like I'm just not gonna read a 630 page book about characters I don't care about and a writing style that i don't care for i just don't get the hype with the cormoran strike series maybe i would like book two or book three if i tried and maybe i could get into this but i read the first one i didn't like it i started this one it just nothing grabbed my attention and i know i should have invested more time and i should have put more into it but honestly we're on the last day that i have to vote and i just don't care for this and dnfing one out of 10 of the finalists like it hurts me a little bit because i feel like i didn't complete the whole challenge of this video but at the same time i'm not going to put any more of my time into this so for all the robert gabriath fans out there i'm so sorry so you've seen the chart and how the rankings go but here they are in real life too so from my least favorite which i didn't finish to a couple two stars a couple three stars some four stars and my favorites and i'll also show you my rankings my chart next to the goodreads average ratings so you know if the goodreads awards was actually based on just like what book got the highest ratings from the people who read it here they are in order of that ranking. Then just for fun, here's another chart. Both Goodreads lists of the highest read versus the highest rated. And how the highest read ones, if they do win, which I assume one of those top couple will, um, how if it was based on ratings, they would not even be close to winning. So my top three books though, to recap. Number three was The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. I get the hype. Um, honestly, like this is the one that has really stuck in my mind and I remember the most about. And then The Death of Mrs. Westaway was a 4.5. And then my favorite, the winner, number one spot is The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. And they have another novel coming out, which I'm gonna read and I'm excited about. And this I gave like a 4.75. So I didn't have any books that I absolutely hated and gave one star because like I can't say that about this because I didn't finish it. And I don't have a new favorite thriller like of all time that got five stars. Those were the three that stick in my mind and I enjoyed the most or was surprised by the most. And now we can finally go on Goodreads and place our vote. Here we go mystery thriller 
the life between us. There's my vote. I actually got to vote. I finally, oh, I've been waiting. I can't believe I finished all these books. I'm really proud of myself. And now I need to actually mark them as red because I haven't been updating my Goodreads because I didn't want to spoil what this video was. I kind of feel like this isn't the greatest conclusion, but I wasn't going to wait another week until the winners were announced and then edit and put up this video. Like, cause all of these books would have been in my November wrap up and you would have seen them anyway. So I figured this should come out before my wrap up, but way before the winners get announced. And, but the voting will be closed by the time you see this. The results won't be out for, what is it, like a week? Maybe I'll do a live show when it's being announced. That's probably like 12 o'clock at night. So that's it, thank you so much for watching. I always feel like I should have some final thoughts in these videos, like what I learned or something unexpected that happened. Though I learned that sometimes I can like really hyped thrillers. A lot of times when a thriller gets a lot of attention, I just don't get it because like I've read that plot point before and to me a lot of times I feel like maybe these people who are picking up these thrillers don't read thrillers a lot and it's like maybe their first time kind of in the genre and so they're really impressed by a lot of stuff that I find overdone but this taught me that even if a thriller is hyped I can still like it all in all I'm just so glad that this didn't end up being my favorite because if I had done this entire video and read all these books and the one book from the list that I'd already read, if that turned out to be my favorite after all of that, I would have been mad. Oh, and tell me your favorite thriller that you read this year. Was your favorite thriller in the list? Did you try to read any of the Goodreads nominees? Did you find a new favorite? Was something missing from the list? Do you have a thriller you'd recommend to me or to everyone? Let's chat in the comments below. And uh, now I'll see you later. Bye.